What's going on everyone? In this episode, we're going to start building a small cryptocurrency portfolio calculator. Basically, you can add a bunch of cryptocurrencies, type in the amount that you have of each of them, and it will basically multiply the amount by the price, add all those up, and give you your total portfolio value. We're going to use some of the functionality we created in the previous episode, so I'll show you how to get this code exactly as is. So this drop down allowing you to select a cryptocurrency, we're not going to have the price chart in there, but the ability to get the cryptocurrency and the price to add it to our list, we're going to use that similar behavior. So over in our code, I have a repo and I'm going to commit this and it's going to be called finish chart and I'll say git push. And here is the repo you can find all of these commits. So just go to the commit history and you can grab the code for any specific commit. So the first thing I wanna do is work on this coin selection behavior. So we have this drop down, and when we select a coin, it will display the price. Well, I want the next ability to select a different cryptocurrency and instead of replacing the previous, actually add it to a list. So for this, instead of having a single selected cryptocurrency, if you take a look at our state, we have this selected. This is a single crypto. This is now going to be an array. And that's going to create a bunch of problems in our code, but that's okay because we're actually going to be removing a lot. I hate to remove everything around our charts because we might end up adding some charts in. So for now, I might just comment some stuff out. I hope that's not too annoying. But let's go ahead and comment out the data and the options for the charts. So we're not going to need those. So we will comment out to here. And we're going to need this use effect, which gets that list of cryptocurrencies to choose from. But we are not going to need this use effect, which is dependent on the selected or range being changed. So this is purely related to the chart. So we're going to comment this out. That way we can just clearly see what is going on. This one probably would have been fine to leave uncommented because it's not going to be invoked. But, you know, just for clarity's sake, we're not using this code, so we might as well comment it out. Now for set selected, we're no longer going to be pushing in a single crypto. So we're going to have a list and we're going to take all of what is already selected and then add in the next crypto. And it's not an array type. So let's go up to where we defined the selected state and we will default to this to an empty array and we will remove the option for it to be null. We can define a specific type for this cryptocurrency. So we can say as crypto, that'll remove that error down below. And now let's take a look at the HTML, we can remove the second select. Now for displaying the actual crypto summary, like the price, this is now an array instead of a single cryptocurrency. So we're not going to just be able to say crypto and then pass in an array. Instead, we should map through it. And then for the actual chart, which we're not using anymore, we can just comment this out. So comment there and then end the comment right here. All right, we're so close. Now we just have to worry about this one line to get rid of this error. It says type crypto array is missing the following properties from type crypto. So basically this is expecting, if you go to the definition, something of type crypto. And the type for that is defined here where we have these properties that we want to look at. Well, an array doesn't have these properties on it. So what we need to do is we basically need to loop through and do this for each one of the cryptocurrencies in our array. So let's just push that down for a moment and we will say selected.map and pass in a function. This is going to have a single selected item S. Selected, I don't really like that name choice because there's not a singular and plural, which I tend to like, for example, crypto and cryptos, but it'll, it'll be fine. Now what we can do is return a crypto summary passing in the crypto as s and then we will close that and make sure everything is matching looks good now let's just comment this line out you can use multi-line comments like so save that and let's take a look at our site so we choose an option we will choose ethereum it has a price there we choose another one and it adds it to the list. So far so good, we've done a lot of refactoring, so much so it might've been easier just to start from the beginning, but 
eh, it's whatever, can't go back now. So let's just go in a little bit deeper and try to build the ability to type in how many we have of any cryptocurrency. We'll worry about the aggregation later on. Let's just worry about now a single cryptocurrency. Where do we want this input? Well, for every single one of these cryptocurrencies, we'll want to be able to put the amount that we have. So that would make sense to include inside of the crypto component since each one's going to have it. So this crypto summary that we're rendering for each cryptocurrency we've selected, we could put the input inside of that. So now instead of just returning the name and the price, we could return an input as well. So let's try that. Let's go ahead and change this code a little bit just to allow for some extra typing. So we're going to return all this and that'll allow us to bring this down to the next line. And instead of a paragraph, let's return a fragment. And inside of this fragment, one of the things we're going to have is a paragraph now, but this will allow us to add some additional stuff in here. So not only do we want the paragraph, but we also want an input. And this is going to have a default value of let's say 1000. Taking a look at that, it's going to look something like this. Let's go ahead and actually put these on the same line. So let's just change this paragraph to a span. And that should bring them together. After each one, we could put a break. Or even better, we could just replace this fragment with a div. And that's going to space things out. So we'll open the div and end the div. And there we go. Kind of looks like garbage, but remember we're not styling in this video. We're really just worrying about functionality, but that is extremely hard to look at. So let's just add a little bit of styling and we'll just say margin and let's go with 10. That should space it out a little bit better so it doesn't look like complete trash. Now it just looks like sort of trash. So we'll create some local state for the amount that we type in here. We will have that defined right here. So const amount set amount and this is going to be you state and this is going to need imported so we will say import use state from react and now that we have state for this we can have an on change for the input so let's define that here on change and this is going to be a function call with an event and we will say set amount passing in e.target.value. And the inputs are of type string, so you can set this to type string. And again, this brings up the idea that you could parse the input value to a number and use that for state if you wanted the internal state to be of type number, but this is fine for me. And now we can replace default value with value and it's going to be assigned the amount. So we'll save and that should allow us to change this value here and that will update the state. For each one of these, I do wanna have a use effect for now that'll allow us to see the state. So let's go define that here, use effect, and we will import that from React as well. Use effect here. And this is going to take a function and no dependency array, because I just want this to update for any state change. Console log, let's include the crypto.name and the amount. All right, let's try it out. So we'll go into Ethereum, we'll say five. Probably help if I had the console open. So Ethereum is five. And then let's go ahead and change Binance to 50. Now you can see an interesting thing here, which is we created this use effect with no dependency array. However, when I change Binance, the use effect for Ethereum is not displaying its data down here. So this use effect with no dependency array, which should execute on any state change, is only worried about the state in this component. So since these two rendered components are siblings, the use effects do not see each other. Now what I wanna do is calculate how much value we have of any cryptocurrency by multiplying your quantity by the price of that cryptocurrency. This functionality is easy. All you have to do is go in here and say crypto.price and multiply that by your amount. And you can just say parse int 
and pass in amount. And it says argument of type string or undefined is not assignable to parameter of type string. So you can just give this a default value, say the string zero. One other slight change you can make is actually set the input type to number, which can help do some front end validation for the input. So let's try this out. We'll choose a cryptocurrency and then we can type in some number such as 50. When we have 50, it would be worth this amount. So we can just take this value and then display it on the page. And also having this as a number type, you can't type in words, but you can type in the number E because there is some numeric meaning behind E. However, it does help prevent garbage data from being typed in here. So it's definitely pretty helpful. So let's go ahead and try changing the display to include our value. So not only will we have an input here, but we will also have another paragraph. And this is just going to contain crypto.currentPrice. And then we'll just multiply this by our amount. And I thought of something, instead of parse int, we'll probably want to use parse float as we could have fractional amounts. So parse float amount. And we'll do that same thing for right here, parse float. All right, so now we should get that value right here. And you can say dot two fixed to improve the formatting. So dot two fixed, pass in two. And we don't want to actually invoke that on the parse float value, but the final multiplication result. So we'll surround this in parentheses and then say dot two fixed, pass in two. And we can also prefix it with a dollar sign. So now we get something like this. One more fix, you can add commas with a quick function call. Instead of two fixed, we will use dot two locale string. And this will take two arguments. The first you can pass in your locale or location, and you can research that if you want, but we're just going to pass in undefined to skip that argument and instead just focus on the second argument, which is settings or options, which will be passed in as an object. And inside of here, there's two things I care about, which is the minimum fraction digits, which is going to be two, and then the maximum fraction digits, which is also going to be two. Saving this, let's take a look at our site now, and we should have two digits after the decimal and we have commas in our number now. So let's just go through some different examples. So even if it's zero, it's dot zero zero. And we always have those two decimal spots. And there's lots of different things you can customize it. So for example, in the case where it's zero, you could look up how to remove that. But I actually prefer it to always have the decimal there. That's all I got in this episode. In the next video, we're going to figure out how we can add up all of those values to get a total portfolio value. And then from there, maybe we can do something cool, such as creating a pie chart showing our different cryptocurrency amounts. Looking forward to the next episode. Be sure to check it out.